you have to lay claim to that. Getting successful, whatever you consider successful, is not God picks certain people he'll make rich. He gives all of us the power of choice. You can decide to be rich. It's highly doable. But you have to think it. I'm no better than none of y'all. I'm not a better Christian than you. God don't love me more than you. You have to change this. This has to change. What makes it hard is your lack of belief that it can happen for you. But you got to change though. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your siblings think. They have nothing to do with it. It's two people born in a hospital every day. It's a person that's going to get a job and somebody that's going to give them a job. Which one you going to be? You get to decide if I'm going to be rich, plentiful, happy, sad. You walk in the house, you pick up the remote control, and you press the power button. What do you expect to happen? You expect the TV to come on. Guess what? It come on. You have to expect that great things are coming your way. You have to live your life with the expectation. A man is as he thinketh. God created us in his image. He thought of it. So he made you just like him. Your thoughts can create things. Now you can't go make earth and heaven like he did, but you can make a better world for yourself. And he took what he had been given and turned it into something. If I hand you some work to do, I don't want you to just hand it back to me. I want you to take it and turn it into something. Moses did miracles with his staff, not because it was a stick, but because it was able to turn into something. Want your magic on it and make it more than what it was when I handed it to you. Turn that opportunity into something. Be fruitful. Turn that department into something. Turn that house into a home. Turn that man into a husband. Turn that kid into a man. Turn that woman into a wife. Turn it into something. Make it more than what it was. There's something in you that says that I want to focus on my personal economy. That says you're not sitting back waiting to see what politicians will do for you. There's something in you that says always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. The most dependable hand in the world is the one at the end of your risk. You are different. You have greatness within you. The ideal situation to die is to have family members as they cross over. Imagine being on your deathbed and standing around your deathbed. The ghost, the ideas, the talents, the abilities given to you by life. You never pursued those dreams. You never used those talents. You never used those abilities. And there they are saying, we came to you. And now, we must die with you. I received a letter from a single parent mother. She and her family had immigrated to the United States from Europe years ago. English wasn't her first language. She had three small children. Didn't know how she would ever be able to send them to college. Looked like she was at a disadvantage. Foreign country, alone, didn't know anyone. She applied for a job as a secretary at a prestigious university. There were dozens of people there applying for the same position. The lady in charge wasn't nice to her at all. She was very harsh and condescending. All the applicants had to take a five-minute typing test. She was not a great typist. She started typing, doing her best. Five minutes later, the bell went off. She stopped, but the lady in charge had gotten distracted answering a phone call. She told this mother to keep typing. That's not your bell. Well, it was her bell. It was right in front of her. The mother said, okay, and typed for another five minutes. They added up the number of words she had typed, 10 minutes worth, and divided it by five, and she by 
by far had the best typing skills and ended up getting the job. One of the benefits of working for the university is that your children can attend school for free. That was over 30 years ago. Now all three of her children have graduated from this prestigious university, over $700,000 in free education. God knows how to transfer what you need. You may be limited, but he's not limited. When people are not treating you right, not doing what's fair, don't get discouraged. They don't have the final say. God does. What's interesting is this lady that was so condescending, not helpful. Now she works for this single mother. She used to have the authority. Now it was transferred to this mother. God is keeping the records. He sees who tried to stop you, who played politics, held you down, who walked away. They may have the upper hand, but your time is coming. Stay on the high road. Let God fight those battles. No person, no group, no boss can stop what God has ordained for you. In the scripture, Ruth was out working in the fields. She was a widow at a young age. Her husband had died. She was picking up leftover grain, barely making it. That's how she and her mother-in-law, Naomi, survived. Ruth had a heart after God. She could have been bitter, had a chip on her shoulder, but instead she was taking care of Naomi. She'd get up early every morning and go find the food that they needed. It looked like she would always struggle. Life had been unfair, bad break, husband's gone. Her dreams were shattered. She never imagined she would be at this place in life. But God sees what you've been through. He sees what wasn't fair, how you've been dealt a tough hand. If you'll stay in faith, he'll make it up to you. You're not limited by what's happened to you, what you didn't get, who wasn't there for you. You may be at a disadvantage, but God is not at a disadvantage. He controls the universe. One day, the man that owned all those fields, one of the wealthiest men in that area, his name was Boaz. He saw Ruth and and they fell in love. Eventually, they were married. Now, instead of working in the field, Ruth owned the field. She never had to pick up leftover grain again. A transfer took place. Suddenly, she had more than she ever dreamed. Like Ruth, many of you have been faithful. You've done the right thing when it was hard. You didn't complain. You had a bad break, but you didn't get bitter. You've been overlooked, but you kept being your best. I believe you're about to see a shift. God's about to transfer some things. It's going to be unusual out of the ordinary, the right
people, the Boaz, are going to notice you. New doors are going to open. Some suddenlies, promotion, opportunity, houses that you didn't build, vineyards that you didn't plant. When Ruth was out in the fields, she didn't see Boaz. She didn't know who he was, but Boaz saw her. The right people are seeing you. God is arranging things in your favor, ordering your steps. Don't believe those lies that you're stuck, you're limited. You've seen others blessed, successful, good relationships, but that'll never be you. No, a transfer is coming, a shift, something that catapults you to a new level. When we acquired the Compact Center, it wasn't just a transfer of resources, it was a transfer of influence. This one good break put us 50 years down the road in respect, in credibility. Several years before we moved in here, I would see certain people at our children's school events. I would politely say hello, but some of them wouldn't give me the time of day. They saw me coming. They would turn and look the other way. They saw me as second class. I came from that church on the other side of town. We didn't have a good location, prestigious address, a fancy building. In their mind, we were not up to par. But when we moved into this place, the Compact Center, it was a different story. Now people that never paid any attention to me would come up and be so friendly. One lady, she had never acknowledged me. If I walked up, she acted like I didn't exist. Now she was my best friend. She brought other people over. This is Joel. He pastors the church in the Compact Center. One day she said, Joel, I want to come to your service. Can you save me a seat? I said, sure I can. I did. Right up there by the flag. God knows. I saved her a good seat. God knows how to make you be seen in a different light. He's going to transfer influence, honor, prestige. You don't have to manipulate things, play up to people, try to convince them to respect you. Let God do it his way. This is what Joseph did. He was in prison. He'd been betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery. This lady lied. about it. Now he was sitting in his cell. He had no influence, no resources, no future to speak of. But one night the Pharaoh had a dream that he didn't understand. The butler remembered when he was in prison with Joseph that Joseph could interpret dreams. He told the Pharaoh. Well, Joseph interpreted the Pharaoh's dream. Overnight, he made Joseph second in command of all of Egypt. Joseph went from no influence to the highest influence. The Pharaoh said nothing will be done in this country without Joseph signing. Off. He went from no resources to being in charge of all the food supply of Egypt. When his brothers and family eventually came to see him, over 70 people, Joseph had a place for all of them to live, land they could farm, an abundant life. What happened? A transfer. 